chess is a big dream with an unlikely start. We started with faith as small as a mustard seed. We didn't have a pencil or a paper clip. We depended on God for every resource, teacher, family, and student. We were humbled by the unknown, the financial pressure, persecution, and complete dependency on God's provision. This is a story of God's presence and His perfect provision. He's continually with us and He has provided for every need. This is the story of chess. How do you bring education where it can be there for our kids, that they can feel comfortable to be able to explore, to, to see what God created them to be? And as families, founding families, we came together mm. and we didn't totally know each other. You know, I know for me and Matthew, and Mark, it's like, we didn't know each other. And so here we are spending all of this time together yeah. with the shared vision that we love our kids and we love other people's kids that we don't even know. And we want them to be able to have a good, solid Christian education. And just to be able to see that heart for our kids, other people's kids, the community, and to say, this, this is possible. Yeah. We weren't thinking impossible. We were thinking, oh yeah, this is possible. <laughs> and looking back at it, <laughs> no, that was <laughs> impossible. <laughs> yeah, right. And so I just really enjoyed it. We just spent hours upon hours we were started as strangers and we became friends. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if we didn't even, so it was quite the adventure and still is. Yeah, so just, man, looking back at it all, really, some of, one of the key things I continually remember us talking about as families uh, was the, the community. Yeah. The community that we wanted to share together that we were building together with our families, with our kids, it's hard to start fresh. You have your own separate path in life and it's difficult to kind of take that step over the threshold. And say, you know what, I'm gonna include somebody else. I'm gonna include other families in what we do in our finances, in, in our education of our kids. And we're gonna to come together as a community to pursue the king. Yeah. And so that conversation really just resonated with my spirit. And I, I just remember, you know, we were, I think at Marion's Pizza in Centerville and uh, we had a long conversation after many prior conversations. But that night, for, for whatever reason, I went home and I just, I just started praying. Like, Lord, we, we need your vision for this. You never really understand prophecy until it occurs in your life. Um, and so that night, I, I literally had the dream of um, a giant, you know, uh, lion, one, but two of chess. Like, and I didn't, I didn't have any idea what that meant, but it just kept like playing as a, as a theme in my dream and there was the cross at the top of of this chess piece okay let's let's preface all this i have played chess maybe two times in my life so i have i, I don't know what the pieces look like i don't you know i had no idea here's the interesting thing when the lion was coming up like when you were telling me that you saw a lion in your dream I didn't remember that when we were talking, yeah. but the Lord has his yep. will accomplished no matter what. Mm -hmm. So he had known that from the very beginning and shown it to you. And then 
maybe yeah. re-showed it. Yeah, and that I think it was around that time. What didn't the Kansas City Royals win well, something see, around yeah, that time? So they were they had won the World Series, and I remember standing at CCA, and I think we were only months old. I yeah. think it was like November. Or wait, no, World Series is in September, right? Uh, October, yeah. Whenever the World Series is played. Yep. So chess was started like in August, we started school. So it's just months old. Yep. And I remember standing at the counter and Mark walks up and somehow someone asked what our mascot was gonna be. And I, I looked at Mark and I was like, I hadn't thought about a mascot. You're a marketing guy. Like, what should a mascot be? And Mark's like, I don't know. And all of a sudden I said, wait a minute, we're chess. There's royal, there's kings and queens in chess, right? And I said, and then first Peter 2 9, we're a royal priesthood, a holy nation. And I was like, Royals, that's yeah. a legitimate mascot because like the royals just won. Yep. Mm -hmm. And Mark's like, Yes, royals, I love royals. Yeah. <laughs> so understanding that God is is literally tying this because I I, I just keep feeling him in my spirit. Uh and, and Jesus is like, get up. He let me, you know, I was, I went outside to our deck and, uh, you know, just started reading in the word. I also immediately went to the internet and said, all right, I need to see what this chess piece in my head, the king uh, on a chessboard, what that looks like. I had no idea that at the top of that piece is a cross. That's... And I'm just I'm blown away. I'm like, well, that makes a lot of sense, right? I mean, the opportunity to to surround our king and to you know pursue his glory and his will for our life. I mean, that's we are the pawns. Mm -hmm. And and pawns sometimes can have a negative connotation in this world, but they, they are they are there they are just there to serve mm -hmm. and you know to to move strategically through this world and to serve the king yeah and so that concept in the community that we had been talking about like just immediately meshed together for me so that's I remember and no, I said I don't no know joke like hearing you talk about yeah. it even now yeah. it takes me back I remember exactly where we were we were in a room at the church in Kettering. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time we, I think it was either the first or maybe second time that Elizabeth and I had even been in a meeting with, with the other three families, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Our kids are playing all over, running up and down halls of the church. Yeah. And I'll never forget, like you just talking about it was like, that's exactly what he presented <laughs> to us. And I think all of us were like, how does that work? But at the same time, it was like a consensus in the room of that's what it's supposed to be. Yeah. And now I still, even today I told, people that, oh yeah, my kids go to Chess Christian and they're like, Chess, yes. what kind of school yeah. is that? And Christian yeah. Hybrid Educational yeah. Support School. I've rolled, I bet I've said that a million times in the last 10 years, you know? Yeah. Well, but I remember it's amazing. too, like you said Chess, and I remember in my first response, I was like, oh, women are not gonna like Chess. Like women are the primary decision makers. And I'm like, they're not gonna like the word Chess. And then you were like, well, it's Christian Hybrid Educational. We didn't, I didn't, I don't think we knew the SS. Like right? we knew that it was a school, but we didn't yeah. know what the other S was. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember like kind of struggling and I was like, so it's Ch. And, <laughs> ch and, ch and, yeah. and like, you were like, you were like, it's chess. And I was, and it took me, I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to trust you because I don't like from a marketing standpoint, I'm like, mm -hmm. remember that? I was just like wrestling and I was like, I submit, like God gave this to you, it's chess. Mm -hmm. And then, but we didn't know the S's. And I remember Jessica called me, I was at the Miamisburg pool working while my kids were swimming or whatever, because we were constantly trying to get all this off the ground. Yep. And I was, I answered the phone with Jessica and she's like, it's a school, Tara, it's a school. And I was like, are you sure? Like, it's not just a co-op, <laughs> like a really advanced like, co-op program, right? Yeah. She's like, no, it's a school. S is for school, it's a school. <laughs> and I, was like, oh, right. I don't think I have right. faith for a school and I'm like can I borrow your faith and she's like yep it's a school I'm like okay I'm taking your faith on this one because I don't have the strength to yep. call it because we we're going from a co-op and the co-op at that time was not a really allowing high school to exist. Yeah. And our kids were all going to high school yes. and we wanted something more for them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so we trying to figure out how do we combine this hybrid type of school but it's not just a co-op, it has more. We actually have teachers who are teaching the physics, the chemistry, and having labs, and, and a lot of those co-ops did, but 
the accreditation also wasn't there. We yeah. wanted something accredited because a lot of our kids wanted to go to college. Right. So how do we get to the next step? And so we were trying to figure out, obviously we want that Christian education. Yes, we want some kind of a hybrid school, but that didn't really exist before. Mm -hmm. You know, a high, a high school can't come pay for one class right. and just get math, the, then homeschool the rest at home. You can't do that. Right. Yeah. But to be able to have that freedom, if somebody plays sports and they're gone Thursday through Sunday on a weekend somewhere traveling, a school can't work with that. You have a certain amount of days you have to be in school. The state says, you know, but how can you move around and let your kids, all your kids of any type of sports, music, arts, homeschool and non-homeschool have that freedom to really school how each individual kid needs to school. And so that's exactly why the hybrid worked so well for so many because they have choices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And choices really worked for everyone. Mm -hmm. Right. So the beginning of chess was a big test of faith for me. We had this big dream and this big vision that God had put in our hearts, but we had no resources specifically. We didn't have a venture capitalist. We didn't take out a loan. We were committed to doing things debt free and we were committed to trusting in God for every provision. Up to that point in my life, I hadn't done that so actively as I did when we started chess. And so we found ourselves experiencing a need. We needed paper, we needed pencils, we needed just desks and curriculum and all kinds of things to start. And so we would get on our knees and we would pray and we would ask the Lord specifically for what we needed. And it was so faith building when we began to see those needs specifically answered as God sent people and sent resources directly our way. A big answer to prayer and one of the first, what I would call in my life, one of the first miracles I experienced was Mary Prophet. She came to us through a referral from a friend who was looking at chess and Mary had the exact answers to some of the prayers that we had. She had an entire school that she had packed up and she was asking the Lord what to do with the school. And at the very time we were asking him, he allowed us to meet. Not only did she give us all of her supplies for her 30 plus years of teaching, but she gave us her teaching experience. And she became one of my personal friends and is still my mentor to this day. I heard about you and you heard about me. Mm -hmm. And you were, all of your school was over here at this white church here on campus. It was in that campus. Sunday school part over right. there. Because I was the in the Sunday school church. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So so then fast forward, we you started your school in 1996, right? Ish. Yeah, pretty there. close to that, I and think. And so this is fast forward up to 2014. Yeah. And you how tell me again how you knew that it was time for you to be done. You, you mentioned that the well, church was um, closing. You didn't want to. You didn't want to drive. I didn't want. Really, I did not want to drive. I did not want to go that far. I was getting older, uh, you know, and I didn't have that big a class coming up yet. I mean, I had just had a larger class, and I knew a lot of them were leaving. And by larger, I mean 15 or 16, because at that time that was an, enough, really. Um, I I was down. I just. I just, I felt it was time, you know? I thought, but I didn't know what I was gonna do with my things. And I'll tell you, if you've ever talked to any teacher, getting rid of their things. It's your baby. <laughs> it, it is. Yeah. I mean, you've produced a lot of that mm -hmm. stuff yourself. You know it. You've got the lesson plans. You've got, you've got everything. Mm -hmm. I had everything. I had everything from K to through eight for everybody. And plus all the other hard stuff you have too. And, I didn't know what to do. I thought, well, I don't have room at home for it. I can't just throw it away. I could sell it at a garage sale. That's what some people do and stuff. But then I found out about you and she was starting a school. Right, so that was a miracle moment for chess because yeah. we <laughs> I, were did, in, I did have stuff. <laughs> I believe it was, so we were, July, we had just decided we were going to move forward with the school, July 17th, and yeah. then we met you probably right at the end of July, maybe the very beginning of August. I don't remember. I, it was at that late into the summer, yeah. and I hadn't decided yet that what I was, was doing. Yeah, that's was, bad, because I usually order everything in August, right? right. Mm -hmm. And so then I remember um, you stuff. came in to, we were over at New Spring Church, and we met you, and... 
you yeah. told me that you had all this stuff that you would be happy to give yeah. to our school. Right. I was there at one time when you guys were there and, and met everybody and you were going to pray. And it was like four or five girls, you know, and you all got down on the floor and lay prostrate and prayed. And I tell you, when I saw you do that, I knew this is where my stuff, you know that he just triggered that right now. Um, because I had never seen such, you know, love for what they were going to do and such looking for the Lord and trying to find his way and do it. His, that I thought this is where my stuff needs to go. I felt, you know, peace. I didn't, I never had concern, worry, wish I hadn't done that and that kind of stuff because I knew it went where God wanted it to go. Mrs. Prophet was like a really tough English teacher to me, but like I joined her Bible teach, uh, uh, Bible class the next year. And to be honest, I did not want to take it at all because I knew she was a tough teacher for English, but it turns out that Bible class was like one of the best classes I've ever taken at chess, just because she was like such an insightful teacher and she cared so much about us and she cared so much about the Bible. So like just getting like that, those kind of teachings from her and like her, how wise she is, it's. Just, it, that was just like a great part of chess. So when people ask me like my testimony now with like where I'm at and how I got here, I always start with, um, or somewhere in the early years of my life, I always talk about Mrs. Prophet because I feel like she molded um, who I am uh, spiritually. Um, I was, a, she was a hard teacher and she really pushed us. She kind of had older methods to teaching um, and I did not do well in that mold. However, spiritually, uh, she was a woman of prayer and she taught me how to pray. Um, and she taught me how to hear from the Lord and how to um, talk to Him. And before I even felt called into ministry myself, I went to her um, and I sat down with her and I was like, Mrs. Prophet, I think the Lord told me that I'm gonna be on the mission field and I'm gonna do this. Um, and I saw her at Rebecca's graduation party just a few months ago and, and she stopped and she was weeping. Um, oh my, this always makes me cry, sorry. Um, she was weeping and she was like, um, ugh. Uh, do you remember when you told me when you were little and you said you were gonna be in ministry? And she said, I've been praying for that. Like, are you still doing that? I was like, yeah, like the Lord actually kind of flipped my life upside down just a few months ago. And I'm actually leaving in August to go pursue ministry. Um, and it was just, just like really cool full, full circle moment because she was someone who, um, taught me so much about the Lord and um, she was the person that kind of pushed me um, to love the Lord and um, yeah so I give her a lot of credit for where I'm at now and where I um, will go after this. I think we got this the building four weeks before school started it was in July um, so just a few weeks before school started we didn't have a place to meet yet but again trusting God and and we ended up meeting a friend who had a church connection and um, they had always longed for a school. And so we were so thankful to be invited into a church. Uh, oh, Ryan, you remember the very first church we toured though. What was your memory of that church? So we, we toured a small church that had three classrooms next to the sanctuary. And uh, those three classrooms were where we were gonna have our school. And so we, you know, through our heads, you know, we were running through what does this look like, you know, how does the schedule work, you know, and, and how do we rotate kids in and out of these classes to, you know, kind of fill the way that, that chess um, is structured. And uh, it's it's really hard to believe the <laughs> amazing facility that we're in today compared to what we had originally looked at, just maybe, um, you know, 300 square, oh. maybe a thousand square feet of space, you know, before and now here we are. It's pretty yeah. amazing. Yeah. That was what our faith could muster. We had 11 kids that we were starting with. And so, yeah. So we, we got a space, we got, we got in, we started painting. The Lord provided paint and painters and we were working literally, I mean, we were working almost around the clock trying to get curriculum in place. And we bought some cabinets and painting and Ryan was doing scheduling. Jeff was helping on the business side get all the pay, no, we didn't have payroll right away, but you got workman's comp and insurance and you were helping with a lot of the, the business. 501c3. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. We were starting to um, 
to work on the 5-1-C-3 and working with attorneys and all kinds of, of details. Everybody, um, Matt and Jessica were doing a lot with this educational piece and Matt was building shelves in our office and of course Mark and Elizabeth were doing amazing work on um, admissions stuff, open house and then the marketing pieces. So everybody had their role that they were playing and it was really beautiful and we got into our location. We launched on August 25th of 2014 and that was our first day of school um, and our kids to this day still say that that was their favorite year of their education. They it was only God's grace because um, there was still a lot of growth yet to happen, right? One of my favorite memories is um, just how we were always doing the most bizarre things. Um, whether we were in school or out of school, um, we'd show up to school early and we'd run around the church building and talk to the church administration and um, even like classes, we'd go to that creek and um, Ohio nature class and we had fencing class and all these crazy classes um, and we we're just always doing something crazy and so fun uh, that was not a normal school thing to do so <laughs> every single day at school felt like camp especially because Rebecca and I were really close so like having like I actually the whole school was just really close we were so small we still so are <laughs> we still are <laughs> We were just all so close, so it was like camp. We always were doing such fun things. It was always fun. Like, I remember, I mean, just because, like, normal school, you did the same thing every day, and it was fun because we had, like, themes for the first couple of days. So it'd be like, um, like, Tie Tuesday, was it, or something, and, like, Mismatch yeah. Monday. And we all would, like, participate in it, and it was, like, really fun to just... Like we had uniforms and stuff, but everything was kind of like changing and it did feel like camp in the sense of it wasn't normal, you know, and especially from going from like Monday through Friday, you do the same thing and you get to lunch and then you wait till the end of the day. And it's just like, there's a schedule, whereas at chess, like you started switching classes from, I don't know, elementary school. And then you have like, fun days on Monday, Wednesday, and especially whenever you're in the younger grades, like it was fun classes. So I think like, especially in the beginning years, like there was archery and fencing and um, like Jonathan said too, like afterwards we would always go creek walking and that was so fun. Like, honestly, those are some of my favorite memories. I just remember all of the like, like, like everybody else was saying, just like the random um, things that we would do after school. Um, like, I think my brother threw a, a bucket of bouncy balls off the balcony at CCA. Um, and there was enough there that I bet there's still a few bouncy balls somewhere in that church. Um, and we also found like a part of a mascot in like the attic somewhere. Um, it's just like the, the, the shenanigans we got up to after uh, school. We definitely learned how to have like true fun where I know now it's like a lot of like kids are just sitting on like iPads now or doing whatever they're doing with the internet. I mean, I know I'm just as guilty as anybody being addicted to the internet. I mean, YouTube, that algorithm is so strong. And so uh, back then we didn't really have any of that. So we, uh, we had to find ways to actually have fun by being in nature and, and like going outside and touching grass. So it was uh, it was definitely a, you know, I think we developed a little, a little bit differently and maybe in some ways a little bit better by, by being exposed to uh, not typical scenarios. It was Ellie Peebles. Um, I started when I was four years old and I was in preschool, I think, or kindergarten. And now I am 14 and I'm in eighth grade. So yeah. And then my favorite memory was probably, probably worship class because that was just always so fun with Miss Robertson and our spirit days because Tommy would always dress up so funny and I thought it was the coolest thing in the world when he dressed up as a nerd. Mine would probably be worship band class because I had never really gotten to like sing like we had music class before but I kind of like started my passion for worship because 
we we just got to go ahead and start leading. Like we were nine years old, but we got to lead in front of people. So it was just, yeah, it was great. That is also probably my favorite memory. And right before Rebecca said that, I was like, dang it, that was my favorite memory and I didn't say it. But it, it set us up to be leaders um, and it didn't just affect us when we were younger, but even now, like where I'm at because of the experience um, that I got when I was nine years old, I now am leading on bigger stages and have the opportunity and know how to do it um, comfortably because of the opportunities I had when I was nine years old. I know like as a businessman, like this journey didn't make sense. Like none of this made sense. Right. It wasn't the right way to go about it. Mm -hmm. And yet your humility and your faithfulness to the Lord allowed you to keep pressing through. Yeah, yeah we didn't uh, have a business plan and that's usually how you start a business is with a plan. And it just seemed uh, that this was just, uh, you know, kind of this made up idea that was coming from a lot of different places and we're putting pieces together that, you know, to form this school. Um, and it just didn't seem like that's, you know, that's how you create a business. You start with an idea and you work your way out from there, not the other way around. So. Mm -hmm. How did you navigate that though? Cause that's hard, especially now, the more that I've learned. You know, a lot of prayer, a lot of trust. I think that that's the big thing is, you know, just, um, you know, trusting in the Lord to provide the right things at the right time. And we continue to see that throughout the process. You know, God put all the right people in all the right places at the right time, um, you know, and, you know, provided the, the things that we needed to start the school at the right time, the right place, you know, just per perfection in that provision. And that's what that's what convinced me mm. is just seeing all that happen. I remember there were so many miracles that came in. Mm. I mean, just so so many. Even from just the teachers, the teacher needs we would have. I remember one day sitting in your office and the phone rang like in the, the at the church because Chad didn't have a phone. Like we just had you know like our, our personals or whatever. But someone at the church called the church directly and they said, "Wait, we heard you guys are going to start a school at the church building, and I teach something." Language arts. Mm -hmm. And. <clears throat> And I heard there might be a need, and we're talking like weeks before school or days, maybe even. No, that was Friday. That was so I was sitting at the desk. We were all in the office. It was Friday before school started on Monday, and I'm literally crying. It's one o'clock. I'm crying, and I'm like, I'm gonna have to teach language arts on Monday or on Tuesday on our first core day because we don't have a teacher. And Elizabeth looks at me and she goes, Well, it's only one o'clock, and I was like, what? I'm like, it's one o'clock on Friday. Like it's <laughs> happening on Monday or on Tuesday. And she says, it's only one o'clock and That's the right. phone rings and, and walks the secretary and she goes, hey, we've got someone on the phone who teaches language art. She's heard that you guys are starting a school. Do you guys need any teachers? And we're all like, are you <laughs> kidding? So down we go on our knees again to thank God because of his literal miraculous provision. Ruth, I wish you would have brought your miracle jar. <laughs> yeah. Because that jar is getting full. Yeah, it's That's true. like, okay, I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's not a little size cookie jar. It's this big. And I don't know how it started, if it was started out that big. It actually even... Maybe we, that was... We have, the we same have a one. few different ones. Ruth and I have So now we're filling multiple we are. miracle jars. Mm -hmm. And to Ruth, to this day, even in the, the meetings, the weekly meetings at the beginning, she's like, okay, that's another one for the miracle jar. I'm going to write that down. That's another one for the miracle jar. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing that you haven't lost that vision mm -hmm. because you look at the Old Testament and they forgot the miracles. Mm -hmm. But you're set to never forget the miracles. Mm -hmm. It's memorialized. Mm -hmm. It's in the jar. It's overflowing. There's mm -hmm. three jars. I didn't yeah. even realize. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. And some of those miracles in the early jars were written by our kiddos because mm -hmm. they like saw the miracles mm -hmm. and they like realized that they're like, this was not our parents. At least, <laughs> like on this end, they're like, my parents do not know what they're doing. So like <laughs> that couldn't have been like a plan. Mm -hmm. It couldn't have been a plan that the teacher called. Like, mm -hmm. you know, and we were teach looking for a teacher or we needed desks and Mrs. Prophet, mm -hmm. you know, like was like, come to Ridgeville, which is ironic in itself, mm -hmm. but right. like, you know, come pick up all my desks because my one room schoolhouse is closing. So here's some supplies for you or 
I mean, and then the kids started to realize, like, mm -hmm. what miraculous thing will happen when I go to that building today? Because mm -hmm. they were here, <laughs> or not here, because we didn't have this building, but our kids were there for hours, painting, cleaning, mm -hmm. cleaning desks, um, moving furniture, moving books, moving books mm -hmm. labeling books, um, mm -hmm. praying, just doing the things that had to be done in such a short period of time. Mm -hmm. And, but they were like, wait, we became, they became expectant. And then the story took a really interesting turn. The Taylors got orders with Ryan's um, service in the military. So they got orders to go to Germany and um, spent a couple of months there on site. And then it was the painful time when they moved on to Germany in November. Mm -hmm. But we stayed connected. We were thankful because chess was established enough that the boys could take online classes and learning and they knew they had had a few months in the community so they had some friendships and they were able to do FaceTime and technology was just amazing that they they were able to do that and we stayed a part of just getting the things going there was still a lot to be done and like just shoring up everything. Um, when you don't have paperclip, you also don't have a form, you don't have a process, <laughs> you don't have a even a knowledge of like what you fully even needed. Yeah. So like there was a lot of learning and a lot of like trying to figure things out. While I wish that we could have said, yes, we had this great plan and it went exactly according to plan because our strategy was so airtight and so beautiful, what we really had was obedience to God and His plan. And His plan is being accomplished and it is beautiful. And it's way more than what we could have ever dreamed or asked or imagined. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of the way that it has worked out and continues to work out is that none of us get glory. None of us get to say, look how great we were. Look how strategic we were. Look how um, expert we were at executing this strategy. All glory gets to go to God. He gets to receive it all for the students and the families and us who have been impacted greatly. And so I'm, for that, I'm really grateful. So that first year for me was bittersweet. We were creating things every single day as the school year developed. And my daily prayer to the Lord was, Lord, I'm here to serve you, but I need you to show us what to do because we don't know how to do this vision that you have put in our hearts. The daily dependence on the Lord was exciting and exhausting. It was so unnatural for me to not have a plan, and it's so un-American to not have a plan, to not have it all figured out ahead of time, to not feel in control of what I was gonna be doing every day or how things were gonna turn out. And so walking in dependence with the Lord was very unnatural for me. However, it was exciting to be walking with Him and to, to depend on Him every day for all of our needs. And by the end of the year, I was, I found myself deeply tired and um, yet hopeful for the future. We had grown so much by the end of the year and we needed more space for an indoor resource facility and for, for gym and for different things that were happening in the school day. And so we were able to secure a location at Morningstar Baptist. So at the end of our first year, after such a big year, so many new things, so many firsts and so many starts, we had to pack everything up into boxes and load it onto a U-Haul and take it across town to Morningstar Baptist Church. We had the support of Morningstar, their community and the chess community all came together and we moved it in within a day. We were so grateful once again for God's faithful provision and how he met all of our needs every step of the way. The first class that I taught though with you guys was definitely the Ohio Nature Studies class. And it was basically in my vision just to get kids outdoors um, and then to, to get to know their environment just here in Ohio alone. And then 
it was fun. It was definitely interactive. They built, you know, bird houses. They just, you know, just kid things. Fishing. Fishing. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. And Hannah caught the largest I'd ever yeah. seen out of a pond. Yeah. So yeah, still got pictures of that. Um, so it was a lot of fun, and it was from all ages too. So it could hit all kids. Then uh, that's when we realized, you know, things were changing that the uh, College Credit Plus would become an issue and that we wanted to keep the kids together. So that's how TNT came into our minds. And uh, that was Angie Newsom and I. And um, you gave us full reign to just, okay, make it what you want. So we did and uh, it was a blast just developing it and seeing the changes in the, the eight years that I was part of it. But the uh, first two years was just learning the school and we started the dances and yeah, those were successful. And the first year I think we had 20, 22 kids to within three years we had 58. And then after that is when we decided we had to split the age groups because of too many. And uh, the great thing about that is it encompassed the missions, the actual service projects that came along with the actual adventures. Really, it's the spirit of the students, I noticed. Um, basically, many didn't have the skills. I really remember it developing in the first three years. The, 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 that's when I decided splitting it was better because too big, you couldn't get that, that connection with the students to develop one another and to lift one another up, not only physically, but spiritually. And um, you would see that happen at Butler Springs was a great place for that to happen. And it, that was kind of the launching event every year, which made it an overnighter, which in turn made the students immediately connect. And uh, I can really remember um, Malia Staggy struggling hard with the rock climbing. I remember John and Lane, for some reason, those two stuck out in my mind because they really helped push Malia and support her on that initial climb and from then on she she lost that fear which was awesome and um, so that was wonderful and then the same way with on the ski hills many had never put skis on let alone gone down those hills and to see that development and that helpfulness from one student to the other was pretty awesome and then like I said then you put the mission trips involved with it well that was a whole new level of giving. I mean, the work that they would do in a day's time was tremendous. And sadly, I missed the one I wanted to go to, which was Simple Street. But by my understanding, that was by far one of the best they've ever done, because they were definitely downtown Dayton. And uh, being escorted with others to actually encounter the homeless and to truly witness and help give food out. and. And there was a lot of witnessing apparently that happened that day and I sadly I didn't get to be part of that. So they really got to interact with who was receiving the scripture, which was awesome. There was a lot of development that would happen in that four years if they went through all four years. And um, you're right on the fact that when we created, when we came up with the idea ultimately to do TNT, it was for multiple reasons. But one of the largest was to me and it still is if you wanted a regular school, you could go to a regular school. The point about chess was to be unique and its own path. And there was no school in existence that did what we did as far as the outdoor level of, of adventure, the, the missions that was happening monthly. Th that didn't exist in any other school I'd been at, and I'd been in private schools. So that never was there, and I felt like it reached a lot of students that not every student is an athlete, but every student can hike. Every student can learn to potentially ski or they can rock climb, but not every student's an athlete. And so I really wanted to reach to the kid that wanted to do things, the student that wanted to do adventure, but didn't have the opportunities. And yeah, those things are very expensive to do, but yet we found ways to make it work. And so then to see them go, I still want to continue it, I'm glad we were able to touch their hearts. The five years we had at Morningstar Baptist Church were so core to the development and establishment of chess. That, those, that was the time frame that we were able to secure our finances because of their generosity and allowing us to share space with their church. We were able to establish our educational 
model through accreditation that we went through while we were at Morningstar and many other organizations. TNT got started while we were there. Our dances happened there. So we were so thankful for their generosity to Chess in allowing us to be in their space for those five years. Well, I drove down to Cincinnati, so this was my route. No connections at all to Ridgeville. I went to Centerville City Schools, but I would take a more scenic route to 71, so I'd hit 48, which brought me right past this school. And the Lord gave me an auditory, kind of just like, there should be kids playing on the playground. And there should be screams and giggles and yelling and and there's no school there. And it just was sad. Even though I had no connection to that, mm -hmm. no idea even before that drive, because I commuted for was it 15 years mm -hmm. that I commuted. And so but then I started realizing this is what the Lord's hearing. Mm -hmm. And he's just sharing. And now, because we've had so many Ridgeville alumni come into this school building to realize that they were grieved. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, I had no connection, but yet they were the ones. Mm -hmm. My kids went to school here and it's no longer about, yes, they made their way to, to other schools, but their cries, their heart, their grieving, it was still there. Mm -hmm. And so God shared a little bit of that glimpse and a part of a prayer request. Mm -hmm. Will you pray with me? Because there's many others praying. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about the sound that you hear. It's, it's kids aren't in community together as they were before. Because there was this whole like 50 year, I, mean, I learned all this after the fact, but this 50 year run of just wanting to see their kids grow up in education. And so it was, it was just, just a little bit the Lord had shared. Will, will you pray with us? Because many are praying and there should be kids in this, in this school building. After the five years of being at Morningstar Baptist Church, the Lord led us to consider this property here, the former Ridgeville Christian School property. It was abandoned for nine years. It had a lot of work. The total renovation that the contractors were giving to us was about $4.4 million to renovate this property, which seemed insurmountable to us at the time. In 2019, we took the steps to get the architectural drawings, mold remediation, and permitting needed to start the process of revitalizing this property for use for chess. It was a really big step. Again, we did not have the finances that had come in in advance. The Lord, once again, which is the story of what He's done with chess, is He's required us to depend on Him every step of the way. It was a hard process. I would, I would show up every day and um, walk through the halls and I would just ask the Lord, what are we gonna do today? How are we going to remediate this whole property? And he would show me, focus on this, 
focus on this, paint this, and I would just go and get supplies. Another board member at the time, Wendy Grubbs, was very instrumental in remediating this property and used her project management skills and she organized and leveraged volunteers to get here. So we calculated over the course of six weeks. So once again, God uses the six week time frame with us, which he did when we started Chess in the very beginning. We remediated this property and renovated it for use, not, not the 4.4 million, but we were able to get occupancy within about six weeks. We had 3,000 volunteer hours, over $250,000 in donations, and we were able, by God's grace and in a miraculous event, to get occupancy to start school in 2019 here in the Ridgeville, former Ridgeville Christian School facility. The nearly five years since Chess moved into the former Ridgeville Christian School facility has been characterized by growing together. After the initial renovation, we successfully navigated COVID while our community rallied and our students did not miss one educational day. Following the return from COVID, the growth necessitated us to make room for more as we finished additional classroom spaces and created the maker space. Having two full gyms enabled our athletics to grow to include nearly half of the student body. Chess has experienced a 1 Corinthians 3 growth. God has given us the growth. We are God's fellow workers, working together in unity to accomplish the vision God commissioned our community. I guess it's just been a neat journey to see from the very first church that we were at where they didn't want to sleep anything so we were hauling everything in every time we taught and hauling everything out to the progression to Morningstar where we had our cabinet that we got to store a few things in and um, it's neat to, to think back and think about doing dissections on the Morningstar conference table and being so worried that things would spill or something would happen um, and having one, one microscope, like my personal microscope that I would bring in and now to look and we have these great science tables and a science room with running water and a classroom set of microscopes. It's just, um, it's amazing to see how faithful God has been just to provide what we need and how we've grown. My big passion is to just make sure that kids know that science and faith are not mutually exclusive. That's like a big thing people tend to um, compartmentalize. Like I can't believe in science and believe in God. Um, and I want them to know that they can, that it makes sense. Um, that's kind of a countercultural. you know, people um, tend to think that if you're a Christ follower that you're not really thinking, that you have just kind of given that in. like. You're not, you're not a thinking person. And I want the kids to know that they can um, follow through, that they can look at um, creation through a Christian worldview and that it does make sense. They can look at science as a Christian and they can mesh, you know, that they do go together. And I'm just um, passionate that they don't stick their heads in the sand and not um, look at what the world 
tells us about evolution and about science, but that also they can refute that from an intelligent thinking point of view. I've been at CHESS since the second year. Um, we came to CHESS because we were homeschooling and looking for more support, having no idea what God had in store for our entire family. So I was hired um, that same year, at the end of the year, our first year here, and the growth that I've experienced through working here has been absolutely incredible. Um, I, I didn't even have any idea that God had a plan for me with our partnership with Chess. Um, I thought it was just for my kids. But I, um, I've been so challenged and grown um, in my skill set, spiritually, um, relationally. I just, when I look back at the last nine years, I, I'm a different person than I was when we came to Chess. And um, I've been so thankful to have the opportunity to grow as a person in an environment that um, Perfection is not expected, that it's a safe place for us to lean into gifts at a really kind of a low risk because there's not this expectation that we're already fully developed in who, um, who we're going to be, but we can, even if that process looks a little messy, that's okay. And we have leadership here that allows for that. And I love that because that also creates an environment for our students so that my kids get the benefit of being able to not be complete perfect people, but to be able to grow into who God's created them to be in the context of adults who are pouring into them and care about them at a very deep level. And now um, we're just coming off of our oldest having graduated last year, and I'm just blown away to see the growth that he's experienced um, because of the discipleship of the teachers and leadership here. And when I look at, at Drew, as a first year college student and like launching on his own, I, I just can't imagine who he would be as a person had he not been in this environment. And so as I watch my younger kids as they're entering high school and going through middle school, I'm so excited to see what God has planned for them and to watch them grow through this process too. Also, even my husband, Andy, as he's come on to chess as part of like the coaching staff for soccer and basketball, um, he's made really deep connections relationally. Um, he has grown in his friendships and chess has really become our community where our entire family has had an opportunity to grow in community and grow personally and grow spiritually. And I couldn't be more thankful. One of the main things for me that's always been a challenge is I have dyslexia. It's definitely been less of a challenge the past few years, but when I'm always nervous to start an English class or anything that I'll have to write with. And Mrs. Huff's class, I was, it, it was intimidating and it was extremely rigorous and I, I was nervous. There were some papers I didn't get the best grades on because she, she holds us up to a standard. That probably was the most helpful thing for me with this, with this whole school here. I just started my first English class at Sinclair and I have gotten a 100% on every wow. single assignment That's amazing. and it's all because of Mrs. Huff. Like she really like, it was just phenomenal the impact she had on my writing. So you've gone to a variety of different educational models. Mm -hmm. What do you love about chess specifically? What is it that has been a great experience for you? I'd say there's two things. First of all, the hybrid. I mean, that's just phenomenal, the flexibility with it's amazing. But I think the atmosphere here is the most wonderful and spectacular thing out of anywhere I've ever been. Like, there's places I've been to that has amazing teachers, but the student body isn't that great. Chess has it all. They've got amazing teachers that are so wonderful and so supportive, but then the student body, that's where I really think it comes down to. People are so encouraging. I just remember walking through the halls and people just smiling at you. You know, everyone's like, I'll pass people in the hallway that I don't know very well. And they're just like, hey, how are you doing today, Rosemary? Like, especially for my first year here, I didn't know anyone, really nervous about all of that. But everyone's so kind, so supportive and so encouraging. I think that's like Chess's biggest, quali best quality. Like, it's wonderful. I love that. Well, you helped to make it special here too. Well, thank you. We were looking to homeschool, but we didn't want to homeschool. We, our kids went to public school in Jamestown, Ohio. Um, and Beth, my wife, does um, hair. So she had a, a client come and tell us about chess. And it sounded like the perfect scenario for what we were looking for. And 
the stars align and we actually decided to one of the catalysts for us moving closer um, in the Centerville was was chess. We gave it a shot. Um, we loved it, um, put our house up for sale and now moved a little closer. And then that was, I think, five years ago. Um, and we've just really bought in. It's, 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 the perfect, it's the perfect scenario for us. And I've had the opportunity to really get ingrained with the community. And then as we were going through um, looking for a new building and um, the strategic growth, um, I had the opportunity to join the board. And I joined it from a dad's perspective, having, the, having my kids here. Started with two, now we have three, thriving, um, love the community, and it's just been a great fit for us. We all have pockets of different communities that we're all um, part of. Um, another you know, community I'm part of is just where I live, you know, in our neighborhood. And it's always fun for us to kind of you know, think differently and be different. We get a lot of questions about why are our kids at home on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And we love those questions because we get to tell them the why. We get to tell them you know, how this is a partnership. And we get a lot of weird looks sometimes because they're like, wait a minute, what, you, you want your kids at home? Absolutely, we, we love that partnership. We love giving them the ability to come here, make, make friends, have phenomenal instruction, phenomenal community, and also have the ability to, to, to partner with Chess at home. And again, we just, it's interesting just the, um, the conversations that simple things that people notice can spark. And it's a conversation I think it's worth having on. Some people might be complaining that their kids don't have enough time. They're, well, don't, don't make sports your idol and, you know, um, keep in mind, like our kids have homework, but we call it schoolwork because traditionally school homework is you go to school all day and you come home and you have more work to do, um, not letting kids be kids. So we really love those conversations and they happen a lot because people kind of see our kids as different and that's, that's our ultimate goal is we want them to be different. We want the, we want the light to shine through them and I think chess helps us do that. We have been here, this is our fifth year at chess. Um, we came when my youngest daughter decided she wanted more friends than she had in the homeschooling world. And we had known Stephanie Huff for years and years. And she said, you guys should really come to chess. So we came um, and I knew that I did not want to be at home by myself. I wanted to be around a lot of people. And so I applied to teach at chess. I applied to be a science teacher at chess. Um, and Tara and I, in our very first conversation, um, realized that the Lord maybe wanted me to do something different. And I had the joy of being the front desk reader my first year at Chess. And it was great because I got to know all the parents, all the students, and all the teachers. And it was really just the best experience I'd had in years and years. And then out of that, we discovered I really like supporting our students and our teachers. Um, so then when the principal role came up, I applied for that, which is great. Meanwhile, my daughter um, was growing leaps and bounds. She found the freedom and ability to come and talk to her teachers and really dig in on some points that she had questions about or um, really just be a different version of herself that she ne needed to be at that time. Um, and it was great. And if you met my daughter when she was an eighth grader and you saw her now that she was a senior, it has been really beautiful growth in her um, as a person um, with a lot of executive functioning skills that are amazing. But spiritually, her spiritual journey at chess has been beyond what we could pray for, um, beyond our prayers, uh, more than we asked the Lord for. She has been greeted um, and welcomed by so many people. Um, and she trusts God, she prays to God. I would say how much I love chess, but as a parent, my experience at chess has been amazing. And I'm so grateful, so grateful for that. My older daughter came her senior year um, and she jumped into chess with both feet. And that was the year that we were launching an internal internship program. Um, and so she interned with Suzanne Hines, our first grade teacher. Um, and she realized within a quarter that she did not actually want to be an elementary teacher. And so it helped her decide to take different courses in college. She's a psychology major. She's still focusing a lot on kids. She's working a lot with kids. Um, she has worked for three or four different preschools now. Um, and she 
She has grown and learned so much, but it's also really beautiful because she's still connected to our preschool teachers, Tracy Boyer and Madeline Estrada, and they connect and talk through, and they have separately, in conversation together, made their preschool, or preschool stronger for how they're sharing information, encouraging one another. And that was one year out of her school history, right, at Chess. But um, the gifts that she got also are gonna last her the rest of her life. Um, she did teach for us one year at Chess, and that was how she got so bonded with the preschool teachers. Um, and it's how she really learned that her passion is serving kids with needs um, and helping work with their parents to see the kind of needs their students might have that maybe you know they're still learning about. Um, she's doing that really well, and it's beautiful. The second week of chess, Alex wanted to take like some tea to school. So I put tea in this little glass jelly jar, and he took it to school, and during lunch, he dropped it and it shattered everywhere. Well, he started like, he got really upset. He was like crying. He thought all the kids we're going to make fun of him for breaking the jar, which nobody would, but in his little kindergarten mind, that's what he thought. And so every um, school day after that, when it was lunchtime, he would start to go into the lunch hall. He would start shaking and crying mm -hmm. and having a major pain, panic attack. He would end up in the nurse's office because he was gonna throw up, everything. So Jamie Dennison, the principal of chess, she really focused on Alex, my little kindergartner, and she would take him outside for picnics. She would just have special one-on-one -on -one time with him. Alex now wants to invite her to his birthday party. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and even, I think all the other staff took turns like having lunch with him and just praying for him and showing him, him God's love. And then they slowly transitioned over to the ambassadors eating lunch with him, Merritt and Eva. Mm -hmm. I think one of them was on your show yes. a few yes. weeks ago. Yes, right, yeah. Um, he loves those girls. They're so sweet. Um, but yeah, they slowly transitioned over to two fifth grade ambassadors eating lunch with him every day. And because of all that, Alex ended up and asked Jesus into his heart. Alex, mm -hmm. what did you just do? Get Jesus into my heart. You just let Jesus into your heart? Uh-huh. Good job. So proud of you. Thanks. I just can't say enough about the community here at Chess. Um, after we had Theodore, I think between like our church and Chess families, we had people brought, like they made a meal train. They brought us food for a month. So that was such a huge blessing. And someone else that um, is a Chess family, they bring Alex home for us every Tuesday and Thursday. And that is just a huge blessing to us. But yeah, I've made just so many good friends here and Alex has made so many friends. And yeah, we just we just love it. We feel like we're home every time we walk in the door. Unique quality and commitment of the chess leadership is that we've been independent of the government from depending on government funding. We don't haven't taken out loans for chess. We don't have a venture capitalist that's funding our initiative here and so it's a different business model that has required us to depend on God. One of the outcomes of that because things have been very lean, we've had every teacher, every administrator here is working with a missionary mindset and so as we're growing this organization, as we're growing the structure so that this can be a long-term sustainable option for future employees, for those of us who are still here, this can be a destination job. More recently, I've been focusing on developing a sustainable Christian educational model. Part of that includes developing a couple of revenue streams that will feed chess through the profit centers of those revenue streams. One of those is the farm. So a lot of people have heard about the chess farm and that was funded through a Chick-fil-A Leader Academy grant that we were awarded last year. So that was really exciting. It was a student-led grant. We won a $10,000 grant, selected two out of the whole country. So that was a big honor. And that has allowed us to start with just 10 chickens. We have a beehive in the back of the property. We have gardens and we have rain barrels on the property. So those are just the tiniest little starts to this bigger vision that will include a farm to table opportunity on our campus where parents and students, it would be a student run, student led venture that our students could work at, they would oversee it. 
um, and we could provide coffee and also really healthy options for families to come and have community and enjoy healthy snacks that are sourced partly from our chess farm. Additionally, we have an online option as a second revenue stream that we're just in the very early stages of developing and that's called Grandmaster Educational Solutions. That's an online platform that we are beginning to develop. It's going to be supplemental curriculum that students could experience and it actually is supported all the way up through adults. So that's a different model but it's a digital online learning model. So we're, we're beginning to develop these two different revenue streams that will potentially and hopefully support chess and develop a, a strong, stable education model for our students without having to drive up tuition and make it unaffordable and inaccessible to Christian families. From an educational standpoint, I know for our family, we love the flexibility and the um, being able to think differently um, in terms of what is going to be the future jobs or the future needs um, for our kids. So for that, I see kind of limitless opportunities to where we as a school can be flexible to meet the needs of our students, of our community, community partners, um, employers. And in terms of, again, like the strategic farmers, like the farmer's market, the, um, the coffee shop, all of those are going to blossom into something I think much bigger because again, what those do is those provide opportunities for kids to plan a new business, to run a budget, to think about how they're gonna get some capital investment. All the things that are gonna help our students um, thrive in the marketplace, we're able, to re we're able to recreate those scenarios within chess and we're just starting that right now. So it's gonna grow substantially. For example, we have, we have a small garden. Um, the vision for that is we could have a much larger garden um, to where we bring in some equipment, we bring in, you know, we strategize on what type of crops to grow and then, you know, have a pretty robust um, um, offering for our community. And so those are all like, like really, you know, big dreams. And the nice thing about chess is big dreams aren't unattainable. What we do is we, we, we plant that seed and we let, we let, we let the Lord kind of, kind of water it and it's worked so far. <laughs> So there really isn't an average chess student. Our students have a lot of different future plans. They have a lot of um, different giftings and talents from the Lord, and the same way that their parents want to steward them well, it is our very deep desire to steward our students well. And so we get the challenge of preparing students for engineering, for nursing, for going to be future um, HVAC workers or missionaries on the field, art students. Um, and we know, we know the flexibility that we can offer our students with our educational model. Um, and we're growing in how best to have the breadth of offerings that our students want and how to get that information to them in a way that matches their futures. Quite a few years ago when we first moved into this building, I felt like God really spoke to me that this is a school that will exist for generations to come. The longer we're around and the more I see the growth and impact that we have on families, I'm even more convinced that Chess is going to be a school that's going to be around for a very long time. And even as we see some of our first graduates now starting their own families and, you know, we see on social media that there's like babies being born, I just see a future where we are going to have families come back in and they're going to say, oh, I went to, that's where I went to first grade, that was my first grade classroom or whatever. And I know that God is building this community, not just for my kids right now, but for my grandkids and my great grandkids. And I, I am so excited about that, that this isn't just, I mean, we're gonna look back one day and be like, oh, remember our 10 year anniversary? And then it's gonna be like our 50th or 60th anniversary. And um, I probably won't be around for that, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be really neat to see how God uses this as a place that he's established even like inheriting the, the Ridgeville building or purchasing the Ridgeville building, we know that there have been prayers prayed over this building for many years. And there has been salvations happen in this building. And to know that God has marked this actual property and claimed it for Him and His kingdom, it is such an honor just to be able to step on these grounds and say, 
we're going to continue the good work that he started many, many years ago. And um, I personally went to school at Ridgeville in my younger elementary years, and I had that experience. I walked down the hall and I was like, that's where Mrs. Maddox was my second grade teacher. And that was so cool. And to get to tell my kids that, and then to know that I believe my grandkids and every, you know, other people's grandkids and great grandkids are going to have those experiences. Um, it's just a really special place. I really feel strongly that God has, has marked this place as a place where his people are going to grow and learn and become disciples so that we can go out and impact the world for Christ. One of my very, very favorite things about Jess is our community is such a beautiful picture of what heaven is going to look like. We know that we have over a hundred churches represented at Chess. So when we are together as a community, worshiping or praying or learning together, it's going to be modeling what heaven is like. And I just want you guys to know that we understand that and we really appreciate the blessing of it, but also the honor and the glory that we have the chance to bring to the Lord together as a community. This vision of chess, the story, wasn't my original vision. It wasn't what I set out to do. And but God made it clear that this is what He had for me. According to Ephesians 2.10, this is the work that He had set aside for me since before the creation of the world. And he invited a whole team and a whole community of people around this vision that he put in our hearts, many of our hearts, to come together and to accomplish his plan. Because he cares about the next generation. These are his children, it's his story, it's what he's building and he's letting us be a part of it. So I wanna encourage you, if you have something that's stirring in your heart, if you have a message, a dream, a vision, and you think it can't possibly work, it couldn't possibly happen, maybe, just maybe, God is inviting you, just like He invited us, to walk with Him and to seek Him, listen to His voice, take the steps, even when they're scary, even when you're awkward and uncomfortable, we have to be humbled, and you have to depend on Him. I just invite you and encourage you, go where God is leading you. Just put it into the ground, just like if having the faith of a mustard seed planted in the ground and obey God, follow Him, trust Him, and He will bring a yield and a harvest to you that's more than what you can ask or imagine. At Chess, we've been on this journey for 10 years. God has been present and He has been our provider. And we believe that there's more to come. We believe that we're here for such a time as this and the best is yet to come. Mine would probably be worship band class because <clears throat> I had never really gotten to like sing like we had music class before but I kind of like started my passion for worship because we we just got to go ahead and start leading like we were nine years old but we got to lead in front of people so it was just yeah it was great. My name is Ellie Peebles. Um, I started when I was four years old and I was in preschool I think or kindergarten and now I am 14 and I'm in eighth grade. So yeah. And then my favorite memory was probably, probably worship class because that was just always so fun with Miss Robertson and our spirit days because Tommy would always dress up so funny and I thought it was the coolest thing in the world when he dressed up as a nerd. 